The Romans. What's so special about them? And what have they ever given us? The aqueducts. And what about roads? Well, yeah, obviously not roads. I mean, the roads go without saying, don't they? All right, fair enough. Roman arches are actually the foundation of architectural projects across the ancient world and is the ancestor to much of modern architecture. In this cubed encounter, I'll be building a decorative Roman arch as a display diorama. After a little bit of planning in Blender, I realized the trickiest part of this is going to be the arch itself. The internal coffers are one detail that fascinates me, and I wanted to see if I could replicate the pattern in Adobe Illustrator. I figured out the internal dimensions and then came up with a series of layered patterns to send to my lazy cutter. When bent, the holes underneath should line up approximately with the grid on top. I try and do my best at keeping this square, since everything else that follows will be as wonky as my initial steps. To make my life easier assembling the structure, I flip the arch upside down, which I imagine the Romans must have had some problems with on their own. This ties in directly with the idea of misunderstood technology. Quite proud of this so far, it looks somewhat passable already. Now, if you know my sculpting skills, you'll know I'm no Donatello. I'm more of a Michelangelo. So because of that, I stole some priceless 3D scans of actual priceless works of real art and kitbashed them digitally in Blender until I got this freeze design in the same dimensions as my arch. One 3D print later and this adds a lot of legitimacy to my project already. Oh, and what would a Roman building be without some columns? These are Corinthian columns, which is one of the types of columns you learned about in history class all those years ago. Didn't think that would come in handy, did you? These will be going on the facade of the building, but I'm just going to put them aside to, to dry after gluing for now. Let's work on that base. This is an EVA foam format puzzle piece thing, which I never really understood. Why would anyone make a puzzle that has identical pieces? It's super easy to solve. In any case, this makes for a very good building material as it cuts super easily on the laser cutter. You can also cut this stuff with a knife, but it produces a lot jaggier edges, which can be an advantage sometimes. I want my arch to sit on some progressively raised platforms, as that gives the building a lot more presence. Yeah, so this is the general layout I'm thinking, with the bottom part being progressively more run down and ruined. The two plinths are made from XPS foam, by the way, just ripped from some scrap chunks I had in the bin. The plan is to glue a lot of this together with my hot glue gun, but I've been having a hard time balancing this thing on the table. It keeps falling over. Hey, scratch bashing. How do you store yours? Like this. Oh, um, uh, nice. So anyways, I quickly designed this part and printed it in red to match the glue gun. Some gaffer tape to hold that in place and bam, now we're pod racing. Glue gun and EVA foam are like peanut butter and jelly. They just go so well together. I wanted the cobblestone road to have a bit of a convex shape. Because that seems a bit more realistic to me, helping water run off to the sides. Those Romans were smart, you know. I'm using a bit of paper towel soaked with the contents of this old bottle of mixed up black glue, and I pin the new road surface in place with some sewing pins. Continuing on, I guess it's time we actually build the rest of this thing. I reach for the old trusty cardboard to make up the innards of this building. We're going to be covering it up with other stuff later, but you can't beat the price and structural integrity of this stuff. Adding this top piece kind of makes me think of large billboards we have nowadays. I think these were probably the very first instances of out-of-home advertising in ancient times. Although instead of ads for cigarettes, you'd probably get some corny motivational code or the name of some dead emperor to look at on your morning commute. You'll probably need to find a corny inspirational quote later on. See, now this is the stuff we're going to be coating cardboard in. Detailed bits of XPS foam carved into vaguely slab-like segments. The two plinths are going to be attached at this point too, and more on them later. I take some time to frame out the future quote here too. While building all this stuff, I also set out to printing some very detailed statues for the plinths. These actually come from this week's sponsor, Witch Song Miniatures. They come from their November release, which if you want to grab, you only have a few more days left. It's only a dollar if you subscribe to their tribes page on My Mini Factory. That's right, only a friggin' dollar for the fantastic detailed miniature every month. These are great for D&D, or just for display purposes to be honest. The stonehorn sentry has two poses, which I'm going to be using as my left and right versions of the arch statues. I can't wait to see what they have cooking up next month. 
Go check out the link in the description if you want to find out more. I did a bit of destructive modification on the bus version of the miniature here, as one does. I also printed off a dismembered sentry foot and some sword pieces to use as rubble and debris. I think I'll leave the sentry detachable from the plinth since it could serve as a sweet monster for a D&D encounter. It even comes with a stat sheet for 5e. Now that most of the pieces are coming together, I finished off the last chunks of XPS cladding. Alright, since having your ad here plastered on the center billboard didn't feel historically accurate, I found a saying that really resonates with me to place over here. Labore ipse voluptas, which roughly translates to the pleasure is in the work itself. And look at that, a perfect fit. At this point, I'm adding stone trim pieces to round out the profile of the building. The more layers we add at this point, the more interest for the eye to follow. I even printed some ornamental trim pieces that I might have cut to fit around the part with the columns here. And I think I made too many of these, so I'll probably save them for a future build too. Okay, time to get plastered. No, not that type of plaster, this type of plaster. I add a little cellulose insulation from my attic to the mix to act as a sort of sculpt mold. I think I'm still at an R5 up there, so it should be good for a few more winters. This stuff's pretty easy to shape as needed and can even be smoothed out with a wet finger once it dries for 20 to 30 minutes. I attempt to imprint some textures into it with some rollers here like I saw Zorpazorp doing, but I don't think I did it quite right. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day as we're going to add a bunch of rubble, statue bits, and larger stones to distract the eye down there. I'm also taking the time to plaster the actual building too, this time without the paper pulp as I don't want to add as much girth as on the ground. This plaster is black because I added a bit of black gesso to help bind it to the surface better. The plan is to add the columns and statue bits later on, but look how ridiculous the neon green pillars look like at this point. I'm also adding lots of little bits of sand and stones to the edges here to give a better transition, and gluing it in place with some PVA glue and isopropyl alcohol to break the surface tension. I come in with some tile grout on top to give it a less harsh surface in some areas. There, that looks pretty lived in. Once the building's plaster has had a bit of time to dry, I come in with a metal tool and scrape off the bits in the middle of the panels. This gives me an aged stone texture that looks to have crumbled and fallen apart with age. I think that's what dentists do with these tools too, except on your teeth. Ugh. The building was still looking a bit too pristine when compared to the stuff below. So I got out my hobby knife and added some gouges and battle damage to make it look the part. After priming the building and base, it's time for some horses. Yes, you heard me, horses. You see, in my last video, I built this tiny war chariot that I wanted to add into this diorama. It's gonna need some horses, all right? I'm painting these up in chestnut brown, which happens to be my favorite horse color. After priming the building, I still don't quite like how pristine these letters look up top. So I mix up a bit more plaster and fill in the holes. Don't worry, you'll, you'll still be able to read them. I dab off a lot of the excess and the letters still shine through, but in a more aged and worn appearance like the rest of the building. The horses seem to have dried at this point, so I hook them up to the chariot with a bit of EVA foam painted leather brown. There's not much to say about painting the rest of the building at this point, it's all about contrast. I do a lot of dry brushing, and I mean a lot. I get fancy with a purple ink here and there, but it's just more dry brushing. And then even add some streaks of black to represent water running down the letters for centuries and millennia. After a few more brown washes, I add in my riderless war chariot here, and this arch is finito, as the Romans say. Why did the rider leave his chariot here, and are they off adventuring in the ruins beyond? Will they come back and feed their horses, or leave them to starve? Who knows? Huge thanks to all my patrons for the continued support. We've got a Discord community where I post a lot of updates and, and chat with my patrons, and I even share most of my 3D designs that I make in these videos in there too. If that's something that interests you, I'll have a link to it in the description. Thanks so much for joining me on this video, and I hope you have a fantastic week. See you next time.